Hey Design Squad, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna touch a bit more on repeater functionality because that's probably one of the most advanced functionality in Axure, apart from variables and maths and all that. And I received a question from Daniel W asking, hey, how do how how could I just you know have a product list done by repeater? And then if I want to add one of the items to a basket, I can just do that. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do so. As you can see, I predefined my existing repeater. If you don't know what's repeater, by the way, go back a notch and check. I think we have three videos on repeater so far. Uh, check every single one of them because it's going to be a build on and like a follow up much more advanced than you would expect it to be. And so, you know, I have defined the repeater here. I'm using one template and I'm just showcasing different information and just creating different instance for a different product right now. And as you can see, I have a few buttons which would add item into a card. And for a card, I have a simple popover which doesn't have anything so far. Like this, as you can see, I can toggle it or just close it down. And what I'm gonna do is that whenever I click on this button, I'm gonna take that information and add it into a shopping cart and list it for our friend uh, Daniel W and everyone else who wants to know how to do it. First and foremost, I'm gonna define a second repeater and that's where the tricky bit is because we're gonna take the information we have in this repeater which is predefined and then drag it into this one. So let me show you what we have so far. As you can see, we have this repeater and on item load, I'm just basically loading these information bits if this is too much, again, refer to the previous videos. But you can see we have a data set where I defined the thumbnail information. And then I'm basically just presenting it in a list in this type of template. And as you can see, the template is totally different than the actual information because the information here comes from our table. Simple as that. Now, the next step is for us to define a repeater inside this hidden panel. And I'm just gonna unhide it for now like this. As you can see, it's a dynamic panel, shopping cart modal. And inside, I can just drag another repeater like so. And just define the new columns, which is gonna be, we need a thumbnail. We're gonna need the name. We're gonna need the price. And so whatever we select here, add to cart, it's gonna reappear in this table. So we're gonna transfer from one to the other. Simple as that, right? Not so fast. There's gonna be some tricky bits here and there and you're gonna see exactly what I mean. So I'm gonna delete those unnecessary rows, like so. And just leave that one item, which you know, you can do whatever you want to it. I'm just gonna say an A, an A, an A for now. So it's all undefined gonna reuse the same item just copy those items go into our shopping cart and our repeater delete the remainders just drag it in and let's say oops this is how our item is gonna look like maybe a smaller image the name of it like so and then just a price tag like this so it's a bit different and next what i'm gonna want to do is to basically define these bits to replace this this, this thing so for thumbnail i'm just gonna find tent and maybe just gray out an image so i have defined a new image for our placeholder i'm gonna just import it uh so it's gonna be gray tent open and then the name is gonna be uh, select a product for now and the price is gonna be nothing let's say just a simple thing and now as you can see our placeholder is not gonna contain any of it yet so what we're gonna need to in interactions like in any repeater just define that it has to load it from the data set so I'm gonna go ahead and just say set text target uh, let's see product list repeater is the other one so this is our shopping cart repeater and I'm gonna select item name and in the functions just delete that text we're gonna go repeater I'm item name this is again something you should have picked up from 
our previous videos. If you don't recognize this, go back and refer to it. It's really important. And then the thumbnail as well. We're gonna see value. Again, functions, repeater, thumb. So we're taking it from this. As you can see, it's grayed out now. And lastly, we're gonna define the set text and define our price, which is currently undefined. So it's gonna be repeater price like so boom and if we preview kind of see that it's quite simple nothing is selected I can just remove it basically once I select that then it's gonna override these and then pro properly different rows and it's gonna be pretty cool I think so let's see if that works um, I'm gonna go and just maybe give a name to our repeater which is gonna be uh, shopping cart repeater so we know exactly what is what just like so now the last bit is going to our add to cart button in a template of a previous repeater of our you know products one if you remember we have three different buttons and then every time i click on it which is you see i have a hotspot on top of the button i'm gonna add the new interaction on click and i'm gonna go ahead and do this add rows where we're gonna add a new row to this repeater. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go shopping cart repeater, add rows. And as you can see, we predefined those different bits. Now we need to add a row and in a functions icon, I'm gonna go insert variable and function and select our item thumb, click okay. Then in a the name, we're gonna select our item name pretty cool and in a price I'm gonna select our item price like so boom now let's test it out let's see if that works boom as you can see it sort of works so we can add all those items which is pretty damn cool for now nothing changes the number doesn't change this doesn't really change yet we might need to override it but as you can see, we can add as many items as we want. I don't know what happened with the price. Mm, that might be some something glitching there. I need to double check. But first and foremost, I'm gonna fix this overlay. As you can see, if we add 100 items, it might not be the best. So I'm gonna just go ahead really quickly and convert this into dynamic panel just expand it maybe like that much we are gonna go to style immediately and just say scroll vertically so it's gonna add a nifty scroll bar you can actually disable it refer to other videos if you don't know how to but you're gonna see that we at least fix that cosmetic issue right away which is basically if i add multiple things boom it adds a scroll bar just might need to reposition the price tag uh, so I'm gonna go ahead inside and just do that really quick. Boom. And let's check why didn't it go with a price tag. So we have a price defined and so we're saying add row and the price var item price. Okay, we I, I think I selected different, some random variable. It should be item price from our repeater objects. If you scroll down, you're gonna say repeater data set. And this is for this one. So we're gonna do that item price. So we're saying, hey, take this data set item and push it in a new row for the other repeater because the actual columns are matching. As you can see in a style here, these bad boys, thumb, name, price, match what we have in the actual shopping cart thumb name price and now if i if i preview that hopefully is gonna work yep works pretty well one more thing what i'm gonna show you how to do is how to update the account of the items i'm gonna go ahead and just gonna check what's the count so it's shopping cart number of items is the actual textual field and we're gonna go and check if we have a variable defined already. If we not, we're gonna define again. As you can see, number of products, we need to 
select zero. So this is the variable I'm gonna use. You can add a new one if you want. As you can see, I have quite a few variables. Some of them I don't even need in this prototype. It's from previous prototypes. But so I'm just gonna go ahead and say add card. And whenever I'm gonna add a new row, I'm gonna go bam and set, let's say, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see where it is. Set variable value number of products and then in the functions I'm gonna say insert variable number of products and just say plus one like so easy as that and what it means basically is that whenever I click on add it's just gonna add a new product to it and now if I would want to remove it maybe if I add a removal icon to the other repeater and in reverse it and add minus one it's gonna remove it from it there is just so much you can do with it I'm just not gonna explore because it would be infinite video and it would be too boring to watch it along so I might just split it into following ones if you need something specific to follow on let me know I definitely gonna I can definitely cover it in the future videos but just to show that it works let's say this is our shopping cart Mm, nope, it doesn't. And I know why, because we haven't updated the text field. So what we missed in that repeater, here I am updating the variable value, but I'm not saying it set text. So I'm gonna go ahead and find our uh, shopping cart number of items text field, which is at blue dot. And I'm gonna set it to value of a variable number of products boom and now it's every time we update it it's gonna select it so let's see if that works if I add a new item one two three four it works and I can disable it enable it and just to show you that it works like it's supposed to I'm gonna hide it with this icon so by default it's hidden if I preview it you're gonna see that if I every time I add these product it updates the card and in the card you have all these products visible now based on our previous videos you also know how to add the bits here so you can also calculate this i'm not gonna go into depth into that because it's again it's kind of like repetition of the things i can cover it in the next videos or just refer to my previous videos of how to do so but on a basic level, you would basically say every time you add card, you check what the value is to this and then add it to variable and then update the text field, which is this one. It's easy as that. So I hope this video was useful. If so, give a like, subscribe to his channel, leave a comment down below if you need anything else answered and until next time.